With how much passing is taking place in this camp and not too much 11 on 11 drills, is there anything that you and, and Aaron can gain from the defensive linemen from OTAs and, and minicamp? Yeah, I mean, you can assess their movement. You can assess their their grit, their toughness, their effort, their strain, because he, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to their drills. Like, he puts them through it, and uh, they push every single day. So you get to see a lot, you know. Um, would we like to see more? Absolutely. I was just talking to a couple coaches about it when we came in here that um, it would be nice to have more runs, more 11-on-11, 11 11, but I get it. Like, from a safety standpoint, like, we will be healthier because of this in camp, and we'll make up for it in camp with the 11-on-11 11 11 stuff. But uh, I think the format's been good. I really do. Following on that with Jermaine Johnson, from what you've been able to see, what are your impressions? Anything maybe you didn't see during the scouting process? Um, no, I'm just getting to know him now as a, as a person. You know, you see the, a big, long athlete uh, that can move. He's got explosion. He's got speed. He's got bend. He's got all the stuff from a physical standpoint that rushers need to have. Now it's just learning this game, you know, learning the intricacies of the position, um, learning how to strain on a, on a daily basis, um, you know, learning the grit that's, that's necessary to be successful on the line. How do you now have a guy – each room that's maybe been through this a uh, few years and can sort of impart some wisdom that maybe you guys didn't have that last year in every room? Yeah, we do. You know, whether it's Jordan Whitehead, LaMarcus Joyner, like from the safety standpoint, they just stand out because they are so vocal and they are guys that love to bring people along with them and, and have some natural leadership to them. CJ is obviously a guy that's that guy every single day. Quincy is a guy that's emerged in that in that way. Um, whereas last year I wouldn't have told you that. You know, he, he didn't have a voice. He's finding his voice. He's finding his own authentic leadership style. And then from a D-line perspective, it feels like every day a kind of a, a guy takes – that place uh, and that role. So we got a lot of really good human beings. Like this is in my time in the NFL, I've never been around a locker room with the character of this group. Like it is hard to be an asshole on this team. It really is. You know, you got a lot of really good guys that love this game. Not only asshole, but it's hard to be to survive here if you're not a self starter and you don't love this game because there's so many guys that love it and push it and, and are, uh, you know, self motivated. What stood out to you about Sauce in the spring? That he doesn't repeat errors. He's a guy that is so hungry to learn. And um, if he gets beat, it's like he'll it, most of the time he just figures it out on his own because he has such a good football brain and a thirst for the game and a thirst to get better and learn and grow. Um, but if he doesn't, he'll go immediately to T.O. He'll go immediately to Marquand, myself, whoever, and uh, figure it out. And it doesn't show up again. You know, so it's a guy that's going to – he's going to have his lumps and he's going to have his rookie moments, which they all do. But uh, at the same time, there's not going to be a lot of them, probably less, less than most. I know you guys are, are rotating a, a number of players, but the one guy that seems to be out there more than maybe anticipated going in is, is Pinnock at, at safety. Yep. What have you guys seen from him, and what's changed from where he left off as a rookie to now to you know, be one of those guys that's kind of consistently out there rotating in? Yeah, from a physical standpoint, there's really nothing different. Here's this long, big physical safety that just got range he has like he checks all the physical boxes you know now for him it's really learning the position you know he's a long time corner um corners aren't typically the greatest communicators they haven't had to learn the whole game they've learned their side of the field they've learned their techniques um so a lot of times when you get them back there it's not only the technique it's the vision it's the communication it's all those things so um He's a guy that's getting better, and he's getting more comfortable with the position. Still got a ways to go, though. When you guys drafted him, was did you have a thought in your head about he might be able to be a safety someday, or was there the injuries last year and, and things that happened in his skill set? Like, what, what basically made you make the conversion? Yeah, I think, you know, going back to Coach Sala's time with the San Francisco when they had Jimmy Ward, and um, in this defense, especially when you get into certain formations, we have safeties that have to cover in a man-to-man against a wide receiver. Um, Jimmy Ward was that guy in San Francisco, a converted corner that went to safety, um, and he was able to assume that role at a high level. So we're searching for that that same guy. That's what LaMarcus has so much value to us. Here's a guy that's played nickel. You know, he's played corner in some capacity, so he knows how to play man. Um, we feel comfortable. He feels comfortable covering wide receivers um, in a man capacity. Now trying to find another guy that can that can assume that same role. Panak is getting better. We're very excited about what he will be, but he's still a young player. He's got a long way to go.
with the defensive tackles, you guys tend to go with the smaller, quicker guys. Does that put more pressure on them to win all right off the snap into the gaps? It can. You know, that's where it's it's conducive to the style in which we play. We jump out our shoes and we explode, and um, we're not the read block type D tackles. We're we're going to put this on our terms. We're going to be on your side of the line of scrimmage. We're going to, you know, we're going to go forward. Um, it's conducive to the smaller guy, the more explosive guy. But at the same time, there's there's great value for bigger guys in this system too. So, you know, I think you can find a place for both. What are your expectations for Quinn going into the season? I got very high expectations. Um, he's a guy that uh, last year at this time, as we all know, he was injured. You know, he broke his foot and, and he dealt with that for quite a bit. And and although he didn't say anything to anyone, like if you were to ask him man to man, like like there's something to be said about a guy that misses camp, that misses the off season. That so not only was the scheme new and all that was new, but you're still like getting your feet underneath you, your legs underneath you. So I feel like last year he was in a little bit of catch up mode the entire season. So for this year to have a full off season of absolutely rolling. I think he's finding new levels of strain. I think he's he's going to places that he hasn't gone to in the past regarding the way he works on a daily basis. So uh, the sky's the absolute limit for this man. Like I can't wait to see what he can do on Sundays. You were with Solomon Thomas obviously in San Francisco so you go way back with him. I wasn't with him in San Francisco. Oh, you were in Atlanta. That's, That's right. Uh, Robert was with him. But what does he bring to this group now? What are your thoughts on him? Actually, I, I got experience from Solomon, though, when I was at UCLA like a long time ago, just recruiting him and his family and, and got to know him as a young man. Um, he brings, like a lot of people say, they strain and, and, are, and are maniacal effort and all this and that. He lives that every day. Like there's not a guy that runs past him ever. Like he's running by safeties, he's running by corners. He's run- His work ethic, his strain every day, his consistency, is, uh, it's unmatched. You know, for whatever he may lack, and he doesn't lack very much, whatever he may lack, he overcomes with effort and strain and toughness. So he brings that element. And although he's not a big talker, he is an absolutely by example type guy. Jordan Whitehead, he obviously has experience playing for a Super Bowl winner. He's obviously still pretty young, too. So, how rare is it to get a guy like that who's still like growing as a player and also has this like credibility and experience and right and what do you think the next step is for him in his defense yeah we are so fortunate to have gotten him he uh he is an amazing human being um every day he does something that just lights me up again like damn he can do that he can do that he can do that he is uh he is I don't know what his role was in Tampa regarding was he a leader or not, but he has absolutely assumed that that role here with the with the fellows, and they absolutely gravitate towards him and they follow his lead, and, and he does a great job of that. Um, it's just rare that you get a guy in free agency like that because typically when you check all the boxes physically and you check all the boxes from a character standpoint, teams don't let you go. You know the fact that um, that we were able to get him is huge. He said that he's motivated to be on the field to prove that he can be like an every down player. Right. Do you see a little bit of an edge from him? Uh, you know, it's obviously very early, right. but like in trying to prove that? For sure. He's got a little chip on his shoulder. You know, I think he was, you know, everybody in this league, like they get labeled something, coaches, players like. And, uh, for whatever the reason, he got labeled early on as a box safety, you know, as a down safety. You know, when you get that label, it's like you're tough, you're physical, you're a run supporter. Um, maybe with that same label, they think you're a liability in the pass game, you know, or not an asset in the pass game. And um, he has proved otherwise this entire camp. He's a guy that not only can do it, but can do it at a high level from the standpoint of get the ball and run the defense and get us on the same page. And he's a rare communicator and problem solver. Like when the picture doesn't look like the playbook, he can fix it and get us on the right page. So um, he's done a great job for us. And he's so excited about his future here. If you potentially have like five or six new pieces yep. defensively, the guys are coming back from injury from last year. Sometimes that takes a while for gel during the season, especially yep. lack of preseason reps now. Is there a way to accelerate that in training camp? Is that something you're, you're thinking about as you guys enter camp? Yeah, I think the the high volume of plays has helped us. You know, the fact that we've gone out here and we do the standard three or four 
competitive periods that are full speed. But then we do these walkthroughs that are 40, 50 plays long. I think the turns together, it's just, it, it accelerates that process. So just the more turns that we can get, the more time these guys can spend it together, the more time they can spend behind the scenes together, the better. And they're, they're all doing that collectively. So, um, and we'll keep pushing them to get there. Jeff, the linebacker mentioned- room, I'm sorry. No, you mentioned the change in character in the locker room. What do you think has been the biggest influencer to that with this group of characters? Regarding like like an individual or? You just mentioned how the character, there are no a-holes in the room. Is right. that something you saw last year? Do you think like a lot of players being injured in rehab? What had you seen being the biggest difference of how they're, I guess, interacting with each other now compared to before? And I'm not even comparing it necessarily to last year. I'm just saying in general my time in the NFL, you know, the 20-plus the 20, 20 years coaching and playing, like – it's just you always have a guy, sometimes a couple guys, sometimes a lot of guys that are that are not aligned with the rest. You know, we don't have that. You know, I think Joe Douglas and, and his staff and, and, and Coach Saul have done a, an amazing job of really identifying players that, that love the game and have high football character. And uh, and not compromising that at any any turn, not chasing talent over that, you know, and and uh, and because of that, they've created a culture in that locker room that's just it's unique, it's different nowadays. Like, unfortunately, this league has um, a level of selfishness to it nowadays, you know, where guys are trying to get theirs, and and I recognize and acknowledge that, and it's a business, and we want them to get paid, and we want them to get rewarded for what they do. Um, but at the same time, the essence of this game is is playing for each other, with each other, you know, playing with guys that I love and respect and regard. And uh, and we're establishing that now. So it's it's pretty cool to be a part of. With the Can't linebacker group, the linebacker group, obviously we've talked to you a lot about Mosley and Quincy Williams. What about the rest of the room? What can you tell us about them most? Because some of those guys might need to play. Depth is obviously important. What, can you run down the rest of the guys as much as you can? Yeah, Jamie and Sherwood, obviously the guy that couldn't participate because of the Achilles still coming back in the spring. But um, just knowing him, like he is an absolute tireless worker. He's going to be ready when it's time to go. Excited about him because him and um, Hamza both, they're converted safeties. So last year was like trial by fire. They got thrown in. It's like new position, NFL, speed chain, everything, new playbook. So it was a lot thrown at those two guys. So for them to do as well as they did, it's still a surprise, you know, and the fact that now they have, like I always believe, like your rookie season, you're drowning and someone's just pushing their hand down your head and you're just trying to breathe and stay afloat. And then you have this off season where that's where things start to slow down. That's where the information starts to absorb. And I think both of those guys are in that place now and they're starting to get the position. Um, so I'm excited about both of them taking a huge jump. Uh, I think Marcel brings a little – he brings an edge, a toughness. Um, he's He's got some – I can't say the word I want to say. Um, no, I can't. <laughs> You're setting me up. <laughs> no, he's got some of that like um, – No. Like, uh, screw it, you know, like – <laughs> you know, like where this is my job, but every once in a while when I when I know I go and I shoot my gun. And it's hard for some guys because some guys are so conscientious to do right all the time. And he is too, not to say that he isn't, but he also has that that X factor that all playmakers have where he just shoots his gun sometimes. And I think he shows the other guys there's a place for that, you know, not all the time. But there is a place for that. So he brings that, which um, I absolutely appreciate. Thank you. It's, it, it, it's a it's a really. Do we go out? No, we're back. back on. We're back. Yeah, that was weird. We're good. Very tech savvy. Yeah. You're locked in. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. It's all I'll just hold it right here. And then Delshawn is a guy that just you love because he's just he's absolutely do right. Like you put him out there, he will get every single human being on the same page. You know, so he brings a lot of value in that way. We get quality reps whenever he's running it because you just know that he's going to run it and he's going to and he's going to do right. Um, so it's a, it's a young group, it's an inexperienced group, but it's a group we're excited about. Who would, who would go in for last year? Richard uh, You know, you had that unfortunate situation last year in New England. We had to start sure with it when CJ was out. Right. It didn't turn out too well. Like, who would be your if CJ went out again? Who's your 
make a way back or go in there? I don't know that yet, honestly. I don't know that. I don't know if that's a combination of moving Quincy around. Um, I don't know if that's Jamie and Hamza. I don't know if it's Delshawn. It's just it, I think it's way too early to tell. I think um, – if I were to speculate, you'd think maybe Jamie, just from the standpoint of a, he's such a high-level communicator. Um, but I, I, that's, you know, we're far from that, I think. Jeff, you have um, a unique opponent in week one, and you have all this time where you know the opponent. How much time do you spend on Baltimore? This is, you, know, right. you, have, you have all these months to study them. Not a ton, but we do. Like, so, you know, we don't do the run game out here, but we do a walkthrough run Simulate and it's really just defense, service, and defense. So we slowly but surely kind of mixed in a few of Baltimore's runs because they are very unique. You know, obviously you have all the quarterback runs, but then you have a wide array of, of gap scheme and, and counter OF and counter just a million different gap schemes, powers, and, and whatnot. So it's a little unique, not just the quarterback runs. So it's something you definitely have to start to prepare for. We've probably given them, I don't know, 25, 30 Baltimore runs in the process of this offseason, just getting familiar with the stuff they do the most. But um, it is a unique challenge, though. Last one from DJ. Um, since, you know, you mentioned out of the defensive line, uh, you know, basically they just shoot up the line of scrimmage, so you need the linebackers to, you know, fill their run uh, fits and keys and things of that nature. So now that it's going to be their second year in the scheme, uh, how much better do you expect them to be now learning the system and learning how exactly how to shoot those uh, gaps? Yeah, it's going to be a huge jump in my opinion because it's, it's such a unique deal because for, for a couple of reasons. For one, the way we jump out our shoes as a defensive line, we don't always stay perfectly in our gaps. You know, so from that standpoint, the backers have to learn to soften their eyes and really feel where needed, not color, chase color. So that's the first component of it. Two, there's a lot of vertical stress on our linebackers because they take a lot of the race routes and the specials and the overs, and, the, and a lot of times that's speed, a wide receiver. So they learn to play laterally in the run game, which can hurt them in the run game at times too. So now it's trying to find that balance of when I can shoot my gun, when I have to play lateral for the issue, um, when I have to play off a D lineman, when the D lineman's right and I'm in my true gap. So it's a combination of a lot of different things, which I think takes time. And it's one of the things that you got to break, break like Pop Warner habits because forever linebackers have taught, get it, get downhill, shoot your gap, all this and that. And, and we don't play that style of defense. And we don't play that style of linebacker play. You know, so you're breaking years and years of training and coaching. Um, year two should be much better. Thank you.